Wow, here we are, video number three, video lesson number three with none other than Ted Thomas. Talk about tax lien certificates. And this has been just an amazing uh, 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 journey for myself. I've been in real estate since 2003 and to learn some of these things that that I did not know. Uh, I didn't know how much I didn't know, to be honest with you, Ted. So uh, welcome back for uh, for this third um, uh, episode, if you will, of uh, solid, solid, solid content. Uh, guys, again, write this down, August 27th, August 27th, Ted's doing an entire one day presentation on all this incredible information on tax lien certificates. This is really powerful. So Ted, just like we did uh, on yesterday's video, if you could briefly just uh, refresh everybody on what a tax lien certificate is. Okay. So folks, uh, nationwide, there's over 3,000 counties and all the counties have to collect property tax. By the way, if you didn't know it, property tax goes to pay the police department, the sheriff's department, pay for the school teachers, the schools, and it's going to pay for a little money to the hospital, but people can't pay there. So you get the idea. So the county has a lot of bills to pay and a property tax that comes in pays that. So if the county doesn't get paid, a big alarm goes off, ding, ding, ding. That guy didn't pay the tax. So immediately, half of the states, they sell out, they send people out and say, look, you have to pay your tax. We're going to issue a tax lien certificate. So if you don't pay it, then someone else will. So you'll have a, you'll have a lien against your house, you know, like a mortgage with a lien against all right, so that's a tax lien. So a lot of people like to buy those. Uh, tax liens pay 16, some states, 18 to others, 36%. They pay, pay a lot of different amounts in different states. So we're going to teach you that uh, on August uh, 27th. All right, now the other half of the states, like California and in, 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 uh, in, in New York and places like that, what they do is they don't mess around. They send a note out and says, you pay your tax by such and such a date, or we're going to confiscate the property. All right. Now, in both cases that I just mentioned, the counties don't want the property. They got enough property. They got the parks, they got the office building, they got the school. They don't want any property. So what they do with the property is they have tax defaulted auctions. Every county has a tax defaulted auction. They're authorized to do it every year. A place like LA, they'll have so many, they'll have to have two auctions every year. All right. But they're going to have at least one auction every year, and they're going to have the starting bid. Now, listen to the starting bid now. The starting bid is going to be the back taxes. Okay, so if the property had an assessed value of 100,000, well, the back taxes might only be 2,000 or 4,000. That's where the auction is going to start. Now, I don't know where it's going to finish because I'm not at every auction, but there's going to be 5,000 of those auctions every year. So I became a specialist at that 30 years ago, and I had written best selling books on being a foreclosure guy. I even, I even own the trademark name, Mr. Foreclosure. That's how long I've been doing this. All right. And so I, when I found out about tax liens and deeds, folks, I've never looked back. And I, there's no way I'm going to now because every year there's 5,000 of these auctions. And I'm just going to show you guys how to participate in the auctions and how to make money. This is a real money maker, but there's procedures that you have to learn. So we're going to talk about that now. JJ and I are going to do that. Yeah. And uh, the last couple of, with what we've covered the last couple of days, and uh, I'm already getting, uh, I'll tell you, Ted, uh, my head started spinning about how to set this up. As you're flashing like the book of all those uh, properties, my head was was spinning about how to set this up with systems and operations where you have uh, uh, a VA or you have an assistant going through and, and, and saying, okay, here's my criteria. And they go through and they go through these thousands of them or however many, they pick out those that meet your criteria. You get this down to a system. Uh, I just, I'm so excited. So let's, uh, Let's dive into this for our third day, guys. This is phenomenal. So we talked about what's well, a tax lien certificate, um, uh, how you uh, can buy the tax lien certificate. You can do, guys, you can do this from home. You don't have to go to the auction uh, and how either the, the person that owns the house will pay you or uh, you get the property. Um, let me ask you this, Ted. Um, again, I've got a number of questions here. Do the counties automatically send you a check uh, with the interest once the certificate is actually redeemed? Or do you have to follow, yeah. you have to keep following up the county? How does, how does that work? Yeah, the, the answer is yes, but nowadays they don't even send you checks anymore. As soon as the certificate is paid, they'll text you and tell you, check your bank account because they put it directly in your bank. Okay, so- The day the county gets paid, they, they, they cash the check and then they send a note to your bank with your money. That's how fast and, it is. And does that, does that money include- 
is that what you pay plus a percentage? They, you, you always get paid all the money you invested. You always get all your money back. Yeah. And yeah. then the high interest rate is what you get paid. So if you had, if you had bought a, at an interest rate in, in uh, Illinois of 36%, you get all your money back plus 36%. If you had done it in Florida, it pays 18 percent. You you could up to 18. You would get you would get all your your investment plus the 18 percent. And the in the county the uh, the county calculates that for you. When they, when they if the person goes to the county, they go up. Oh, you owe this plus this. Right, exactly. They do all the work. They do everything. They're your admin. Yeah, yeah. yeah the county's your admin. Your yeah. admin and bookkeeper. Yeah, and believe me, they're right because they've got so many auditors checking the the tax. Yeah. Money, right. Yeah. Uh, what about a review on tax to public properties? What what kind of uh, access do you have to to review and uh, and preview some of these properties? Well, I can show you that on video real quick. But um, what you can do with all properties, the county is going to create a list of the properties. So let me uh, let me get a couple of more of these uh, papers here so I can show. I got a lot of stuff here on my desk. I can do it with. So uh, so let's say that um, uh, you have a, a very small county. Okay. Now this is a very small. Uh, um, uh, county that I'm going to pick up here. And they only have, this county only has about 15,000 tax lien certificates. Okay, it's a small county. So it means small population, not, not the size. And within that paper, they're going to put a whole list. The, the list, look, I'm, I'm just showing you a big list. Uh, and it'll give you the numbers of every property. All right, once you know the number of the property, now they don't give you a street address. They give you the tax number of the property. Okay, the tax number is the original number for that property site. So that tax number, all you have to do to check that property is go just like this in your computer and more than likely a picture will come up. But if the picture doesn't come up, all the data will come up. It'll tell you it's a two bedroom, it's a three bath. This is the address. This is what it, uh, so many square feet. This is the value of it. So everything about that property. So I tell people, don't buy anything. Well, let me say it this way first. Ladies that are watching, and by the way, this. I have more women clients than I do men. 63% of my clients are women, the rest are men. And the reason is I don't teach fixer upper people. I say, be in the paper business. Don't be in the fixer upper. We want to buy it low, sell it low to the fixer upper people. So the women hear me say that this is the business they want to be in. All right. So all these properties can be evaluated before you go. But I say to every woman, you would not marry the guy without seeing him. So do not buy anything without seeing it. Do not buy unless you've seen it. You would not marry the woman. All right, the people that get in trouble in this business are smart asses. What they do is say, oh, well, I'm going to make a lot of money on that property. And they see a, a $300,000 house coming up for $10,000. So they bid and they buy it. They might get it. Okay, well, I can give you an example every week that I've been in the business or someone calling me up and saying, well, Ted, the house would burn down. Or Ted, a hurricane hit that house two years ago. Uh -huh. I said, did you look at what you bought? Well, no, I didn't look at it. Uh, I said, what do you want me to do now? Well, isn't there a way we can get an attorney? I can get out of the deal. I said, you bought it from the government partner. You're, you own that deal. <laughs> then they'll tell me, well, it's got red tags all over it. I said, well, those red tags are your fine for every day of not cleaning up the mess at a $200 a day. Right. Really? So folks, you never buy anything that you don't look at. Now, overemphasizing that, but I hear about it from people all the time. So you don't want to, you want to just follow the process. The process is look it up. We'll teach you how to do that. Everything that you want to learn, I'm going to teach on the 27th. You will see people actually doing the whole process. Okay. You can see auctions there. You can see how to look them up. We even have uh, my assistant, Linda, who's right in the studio with me right now. She even gives a class on how to take a big list of 200 and narrow it down to 20 pro properties you're going to bid on. She shows you that in a class. We do all that. Do all that. We're we've been doing the same thing for thirty years. I and this, and guys, this is August twenty seventh, uh, right. virtual yeah. event. August twenty seventh, guys. Uh, you you do not want to miss this. You absolutely do not want to miss this uh, incredibly rare opportunity and phenomenal and powerful opportunity right. on on uh, on August twenty seventh. Uh, Ted, let me ask you this: because uh, every state's a little bit different, which state is the fastest? You think? easiest or fastest to get access uh, to the property. Okay, well, here's, here's how it works. Um, actually, uh, it, 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 uh, it's funny that you're probably there. You're there because in Texas, what they're going to do 
All, there's 250 counties in Texas. They're all authorized to have an auction every month. Now, that doesn't mean they have to, but, you know, the Dallas, the Collin counties, the, the uh, um, um, Harris counties, the, the counties, you know, you know the San, all around San Antonio. So they're going to have those large population. They're going to have 70 to 200 properties every month, every single month. All right. And what they'll do, is they'll put the property up for sale. So I show up and I raise my hand. I want seven, seven, five. And I'll pay $40,000, okay? Now, the bidding went $2,000, $7,000, it's up to $40,000, but it's a $500,000 deal. All right, so I'm up to $40,000, and I win, okay? Nobody else bids. So what happens is they hand me the deed to that property. I got the deed. I can go right out to that guy and say, look, I got a deed to your house. Now, I don't do that because I know they have guns in Texas, so I'm very careful. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm only joking, right? But the point is, so, so that house, I've got the deed to it. Okay, now that property owner has 180 days to come in and get the deed back from me. Okay, so that's called a redeemable deed. So anytime in the 180 days, now if he comes tomorrow, he has to give me my 40,000 back, plus, listen to this number, 25 grand. If he comes on day 100, he has to give me my money back, plus 25%. Whatever I bid, he has to give me that. So if I had bid it up, to 200,000, he'd have to give me 200,000 and 25%. Hmm. Oh my God. Now, there's certain agricultural rules in that state, they protect the farmers, which good idea, but you could easily make 50 and 100% on your money in the state of Texas. I won't go through it now, but it's possible. But your question was, what's the fastest you can get a property? Well, in 180 days, you're either gonna get 25% or you're gonna get the property. That's pretty damn fast. Well, what are the best states to buy tax deeds in? They're, uh, they're, 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 all, deeds they're, all, yeah. they're all going to be good. So half of the states are going to sell tax deeds. All right, right, now look, everybody can't walk in and spend 40, 50, uh, 200,000. I've been doing it for years. You know, and I'm not going to jeopardize a seven figure bank account on it, but I'm going to bid aggressively on higher end properties. Now, I'm a guy that wants to buy, I like to do one every few months. Most people want to do two or three. They want to do more than that because they're aggressive. They want so the states that have lower price property, the Tennessees, the Michigans, the uh, outside of uh, Phoenix, Arizona, even in Texas, outside the big cities, there's a lot of hundred and hundred fifty thousand dollar properties. Well, you got to go with your budget. You just got to go with your budget. If you didn't have forty grand, you know, just eliminate those properties. Don't even look at them. But the but the auction list is going to show you. Let me get. Let me get yeah, a list yeah. here, all right? Here, I'll get a list of, um, I'll show you a different kind of list now. Okay, so this is a list from, um, I'm gonna find it. Uh, here it is. So this says Sullivan County on it. And what it is, it's a list of 200 properties that's just north of New York City. And what they do, th this is a brochure I printed off the internet. These are the properties here, and these are the descriptions and what the minimum bid is. So I know all that, then I can go look at every one of those properties. I can go check every one of them out. We even teach people how to do Roadrunner on their computer so they can look at 30 properties in, in eight or 10 hours. We show them how to do it, show them how to take pictures so, so they know everything about it. Then they can go back home and bid online. So when I bid, when I'm going to do it, I look up the property, then I go there with a big iPad. You've seen the big iPads. So you take a big iPad, take pictures, then I take the, the stylus and I draw right on it. This is a B and it needs a roof. The windows don't look good. You know, I put all this stuff. Then when I come come back to it, I set it right in front of me, and then I go to the auction. The auction said, we're going to do that property number. I push that one and watch that one. I'm, I'm, I'm at the auction. And I get the property right in front of me. So we teach them how to do it. It's an electronic age. You can do all that stuff. This, <laughs> you now, you don't, you don't need an attorney or a broker or anything to buy the taxes, right? You can just do it on your own, right? You just do it. On, you don't need a, you don't okay. you don't need a, a broker for anything. Uh, now I like to tell people when you're selling, I've got a whole process for selling because that's everybody's uh, weak <clears throat> selling. Yeah. Okay. I I say use a broker, but do all the work yourself. Who I don't care if you have to pay the broker. If you don't have enough room in it, you shouldn't have bought the deal. But that's you know true. you do a, do a lot. Don't do a little. But you don't need them. So let me ask you, uh, Ted. <clears throat> So if you had say fifty thousand uh, dollars to invest, would you rec would you go out and buy a number of smaller tax uh, tax certificates, 
or maybe just two larger ones? Well, uh, in the old days, I would always say, go to a county, a, 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 a county and buy a handful of small ones. Just spread your risk. Uh, uh, and, and everybody wants to just do it in one place. But now there is no more risk because what you, what you can do is you can look online and choose what you want to choose. So there's so much more. It's, there's, there's, ac there's actually too much abundance. There is way too much because now with the internet, we can, we can access 100 million properties. Let me see if I got one on my desk. I don't know if I got one. Okay, this thumb drive will access 100 million properties from where you're sitting right now. 100 million. <laughs> and we give that to people. That's one of the gifts I have. Yeah, so they can access every single product. So it doesn't matter where you want to go, but if you're a conservative investor, you're buying tax lien certificates. Why? Because you're investing with the government. That's number one. Number two, if they don't pay you, you get the property. All right. If you're buying tax defaulted property, you're taking a risk because you're buying used and abused. Don't buy junk. Always go and look. Okay, so you're, you're a wheeler dealer when you're buying tax defaulted property, tax lien certificates. You can send your grandmother to do that. Mm -hmm. If she doesn't get paid, she gets the property. Where are you going to get a property for back taxes? There is no simpler investment. It's yeah. a secure investment. A tax lien certificate is a secure investment. It's as secure as the house you're living in because you own the first lien on the property. You're ahead of the mortgage. Yeah. Okay, so if the property owner doesn't pay you, the mortgage holder will. Or they lose the property. Yeah, because you're ahead. Of, yeah, because you're now you're in control. You're in control the whole way. So buying tax lien certificates doesn't even require any brains. Send your grandfather, send your grandma, they can have Alzheimer's, for God's sake. What, what do you think the cheapest is you've ever seen someone get a uh, tax uh, defaulted property for? Cheapest I've ever seen is uh, someone to get one for a hundred bucks. And um, what's happening now, so that you know, uh, because a lot of people don't know about taxes, I won't get into this too deep. Um, the most powerful person in the government, by that I mean the county government, is not the board of supervisors, county commissioners. The most powerful person in that government is the treasurer. So if you go to a tax auction and there's any wavering in the room of pricing and so on, the tax collector is sitting next to the treasurer. The treasurer will stand up and say, sell it for $100. And so we have traditional auction. I'm sitting in Kalamazoo, Michigan. We're halfway through the auction and the auctioneer stands up and he said, well, all the properties that didn't sell today, all of them that didn't sell, nobody bid on them. Well, folks, they're all coming up for auction in 42 days. Starting bid is $100. I have people starting bids in California, and I'm going to send you a video of it today. Starting bids in San Bernardino, California, $100. Nobody will believe that. Starting bid at the auction. You will not believe it. Well, is that cheap? I mean, can people, you mentioned uh, yesterday, I think it was, but you had to have a U.S. bank account. Can you buy these on credit cards or do you, does it have to come out of your- Certain market? counties, like when I buy, um, uh, I like to buy uh, bigger houses. If I can, I'll do it on, a, uh, uh, I'll do it on the credit cards. And uh, I, I give classes on how to buy on credit cards. Now, not every, not every state will do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we buy on credit. I've got one guy in Michigan, you, you won't believe this, but we, we do a, a class called Be Your Own Banker. Mm -hmm. He bought 60 properties in Michigan in six years, 60 in six years, all on credit cards. He sold every one of them with a lease option. I'll be darned. <laughs> every single one of them. And he got, he, anybody, anybody come in and want to say, well, how much can you afford to pay? And all he ever argued about is the down payment and the payment. Now, keep in mind, these were used and abused properties. If the people that came to them had bad credit, I mean, their credit scores yeah, were 300. Yeah, yeah. Yep. They, they just wanted a house to live in, but they were willing to put a roof on or they're willing to, uh, put concrete in the driveway. They would they would do it. They would get their buddies and, and do it. Well, um, let me ask this is kind of 
uh, wrap this uh, third installment of the Ted Thomas series uh, up here. Um, again, guys, August 27th, August 27th. You do not want to miss that. Uh, I'll be there. You need to be there as well. So, Ted, let me wrap that up with this because um, there's going to be some skeptical people out there. There's always naysayers, right, Ted, no matter what you, no matter what you, right, right. you do, no matter what you try to explain and teach. But there's going to be some people out there that are saying, well, what about these properties that still have an underlying lien, you know, with a bank, with a mortgage, you know, uh, how, can, how can the tax lien just buy the house unless the, 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 the underwriter, the, under, the underlying lien, I should say, uh, um, writer, just write it off? Okay, good. It's a good question. And uh, uh, anybody that, that uh, is learning about taxing is going to be very suspicious of this, but you can call your county treasurer because you don't have to believe me. I've been doing it for well over 30 years, but here's how it works. Okay, when someone defaults on their taxes, the taxes are the first lien on the real estate. Okay, it's the first lien. So the second lien comes along, it's a Bank of America mortgage, okay? Now, when the tax goes into default, the tax collector sends the property owner a default notice. Anybody that's on title gets the same notice. They'll send the Bank of America, they'll send the dentist that didn't collect the money, they'll send the judgment holder, <laughs> everybody gets a notice. And they say to every one of them, either come in and pay the taxes or you're gonna lose the money. It's gonna be a foreclosure on such and such a day. And when the tax collector said the, the tax lien is, is number one, they mean exactly that. So the, the mortgage, and the deed of trust loan will be wiped out. They're always wiped out. As a matter of fact, the tax lien is in front of and superior to and priority over the IRS and any federal tax lien. So the tax lien, when you buy it, is a secured lien by that real estate. So because people don't know that, I answer questions uh, on my YouTube channel. I answer all kinds of questions about that. People tell me I'm full of whatever. Well, I'm telling you, the tax lien certificate is the most powerful lien on any property. I don't care if the people go into bankruptcy. The tax lien certificate will get collected. It will be collected. Yeah, that's uh, it. Just it wipes everything out. It's, it's it takes uh, it takes us to the uh, superior position. So, yeah. Wow. Well, Ted, this has been uh, again, once again, uh, a phenomenal. Uh, I'm, I'm writing notes like crazy on all my little note notes here, and uh, uh, my notes have notes. So, again, guys, August twenty seventh. Ted's doing a one-day virtual event on this subject. You do not want to miss this. You want to register for this event. Uh, uh, Ted is the nation's premier expert and has been for more than I've been an expert in lease options. That's for darn sure. So August 27th, do whatever you got to do to be there. Uh, it's a virtual event that Ted is doing. So, Ted, uh, again, thank you so much for this third installment. And uh, if you still got it in you, I say, uh, I say, what do you say we... Uh, uh, take a little break. Let's do another one here in just a little bit. Okay, we're going to do one more and then we'll, we'll call it a week, okay? Because we'll do these four days before the event. All right, I'll see you in just a couple of minutes. Hi, everyone. You're just going to see a few new things on the screen that are a little different than most people get to see, but uh, we did a little research. Actually, I didn't do it. My assistant, Linda, did the research and she checked with Tarrant County and it's surprising to see how many properties come up for tax auction. Now, in the state of Texas, they do the auction every month. So I picked up uh, the notes from her and his Tarrant County last 90 days, they had 28 properties, 26, 27. And it looks like in September, they're gonna do about 30 properties already. She's gonna show you some, some properties that are coming up for sale. Now, are all of them used and abused? Are all of them junk? Are all of them um, mansions? No, but there's always some property that's a good deal. For example, this one here, has a starting bid of $5,191, but the adjusted value, according to the county, is over $269,000. Now, I don't think this property is going to get sold at auction for the $5,000, but realistically, what if you could get it for 30 cents or 40 cents on the dollar? You can make yourself a great deal and go right into the business of uh, doing a uh, uh, lease to own properties without uh, too much difficulty, okay? So that's one. The assessed value on that one that I just mentioned in Tarrant County was $411,000. All right, now I don't know all the property values because I'm not there doing the same research you are. What's my point? Folks, you're seeing the pictures of the properties. This is not a junk business. You can pick what you want. Now I tell people not to buy junkers 
but expect used and abused, but expect some just need a paint job and clean up and go make some money. Okay, we'll see you on the next video.